Hello gelato lovers, I'm Luca Musolesi, your gelato expert. Today I'm here to show you a little bit of behind the scenes of what happens in our research and development day for gelato. So I'm here in the lab and today we are going to do a few tests about that's the ice cream and then we have some chocolate gelato and then some soft serve for Middle East where we will have uh, only sucrose and honey and probably date syrup as a sugar. So we will test what happens. We are here at the Senza with Gianluca, he's already working. Hello. And I will update you about what happens in the test. We are using Gelato Passport Plus where we can put our ingredients and decide how much we want to produce and we can toggle and untoggle the ingredients while we are adding them. We are about to take out our first test. Washing dishes is always one of the most important things to do. Here we have our two tests. One is clean label and one is with emulsifiers and a traditional stabilizer. Uh, we are trying to make one a bit warmer and with higher overrun. We are going to do blind testing. So this first test were on a basic milk gelato recipe containing water, skim milk powder, butter and coconut oil. The first goal was to replace a traditional stabilizer with mono and diglycerides of fatty acids, locus bean gum and so on with a clean label stabilizer made only with fibers that are not additives. And in this first test we already achieved that substitution uh, which was pretty simple and straightforward. And in the blind test, we also noticed that the version without emulsifiers was slightly better in terms of flavor and almost the same or probably the same in terms of structure. The second goal that we wanted to achieve, requested by the client, of course, was to improve the mouthfeel of this milk base uh, recipe, making it a bit warmer and possibly with a bit more overrun. The tests that we ran were adding to the basic recipe some fibers and also substituting a part of the milk powder with some milk proteins. Uh, of course, substituting milk proteins uh, uh, changes the flavor quite dramatically. So now it will be up to the client to decide what is the preference among all the tests that we did. The next project that we are working on is uh, chocolate sorbet. In this chocolate sorbet, what we want to test is the ability of uh, a clean label version of this chocolate sorbet to stand for several days and to keep its creaminess. So we are testing several types of combinations of fibers and vegetable proteins that can help us to maintain the structure the same as a version with a lot of emulsifiers inside. <laughs>
Now we are testing uh, chocolate sorbet. Just came out of the machine. Let's check it. Tasting the chocolate sorbet out of the machine is always good, but what we want to know now if it's in a few days uh, the two different recipe will be comparable or the difference will be too big. Now we are preparing a soft serve uh, gelato that is made with honey, sucrose, a little bit of egg yolks and of course milk and cream. It's a very simple, natural and with a very few ingredients recipe. Now we are trying to mount the soft serve machine that is never easy. We had the pump mounted on the wrong side, so now we have to do it again and mount again the soft serve. We made it. <laughs> After many hours, we thought we nailed uh, the soft serve machine and we were able to make one cup uh, that seemed uh, almost decent, but in reality, the soft serve machine was not working properly. So what we did at the end, it was to empty the soft serve machine, remove all the mixer and use it in a batch freezer to test the recipe in the batch freezer instead of the soft serve machine. Now you're probably wondering if uh, the same recipe can be used for the soft serve machine and for a batch freezer. Uh, the answer is complex because in general, yes, but in reality, the problems of soft serve machines uh, bring us also to formulate recipe on purpose for that. Some of the differences between a um, recipe formulated for a batch freezer or for a soft serve machine can be the fat content, uh, the skim milk powder content, so the milk solids content, uh, or the, um, often the type of stabilizers and the amount of stabilizers. This simply because the machines can't handle uh, some type of mixes if they are too viscous, if the fat separates after a while and so on. But in general, we can easily use the same mix in a soft serve machine and in a batch freezer. The result will be, of course, completely different, but it's absolutely possible to do that. Only in case in our batch freezer recipe we have too much sugar, it might happen that in the soft serve machine it's too soft and melts too fast, so maybe we want to reduce the sugar. But in many cases we can use the same recipe in the soft serve or in the batch freezer. If you want to know more about this in our Gelato Expert Academy, in the last module, number 10, about special formulation, I discuss a bit more thoroughly about soft serve and the differences of the formulations.
want to see more behind the scenes of Gelato recipe development, subscribe and keep following Gelato Expert. In the description you also find the link to the Gelato Expert Academy, an online academy to learn everything about gelato. If you have questions, comment under the video and I will try to answer them in the next episode of the Gelato Vlog. See you soon!